Uh, this is the F class, and we are on page uh, 99, the second circle, the lustful, and Dante's about to talk to Francesca and Paolo, or they're about to talk to him. Um, so we're going to start with Celeste. Oh, she that slew herself for love. Why don't, I'm sorry, why don't you skip down to 79? That'll save us some time. So as they eddied past on the whirling tide, I raised to my voice, O oh, souls that rarely rove, come to us, speak to us, if it not be denied. So he speaks to these two, Francesca and Paolo. You may continue. And as desire wafts homeward, dove with dove, to their sweetness, on raised and steady wing, down dropping through the air, impelled by love. So these from Ditto's walk came fluttering, and dropping toward us down the cool wind, such power was in my affection at summer. O living creature, gracious and so kind, coming through this black air to visit us, us new in death, the lily clung, hiding, where the world king, our friend, and might we thus entreat, we would entreat him for thy peace, that piteous so our pangs is piteous. Hear all thou wilt, and speak as thou shalt please, and we will gladly speak with thee. While the wind ceases to howl, as they now cease. Okay, pause just a minute. Yeah, thanks. Uh, all right. Um, so Dante speaks to them, and they drop down from the from the air to speak to him. And we'll turn to page. Uh, would you like to keep reading or pass it? Um, there is a town upon the seacoast, near where Poe, with all of his streams comes down to rest in ocean i was born and nurtured there love that so soon takes hold in the gentle breast with the fly with the lovely body they told from me the way of it leads to the still distress love that's no loved heart commits love's score to be with such great joy of him that see it holds me yet and never shall leave me more love to a single death brought him and me king's place lies waiting for our murder and our these words came wafted to us plaintively. Hearing those wounded souls, I bent my brow downward, and thus bemused, I let, I let time pass till the poet sat up. What thinkest thou? When I could answer, I began. Alas, sweet thoughts, how many, and desire, how great, brought down these twain unto the dolor dolorous town. So he's asking them, How did you get here? What caused, what happened that, that brought you here? Uh, keep reading or pass it up? Then I turn to them, thy dreadful fate, Francesca makes me weep, but so inspires pity, said I, and grief compassionate. Tell me, in that time of sighing sweet desires, how and by what did love his power disclose, and grant me knowledge of your hidden fires? Then she said she to me, the bitterest woe of woes is to remember in our wretchedness old happy times, and this thy doctor knows. Yet if so dear desire my heart possess, to know that root of love which brought us all, I'll be as those who weep and who confess. One day we plead for pastime how and wrong, Lord Lancelot lay to love who loved the queen. We were alone and thought no harm at all. As we read on, our eyes met now and then, and to our cheeks the changing color started. But just one moment overcame us when we read of the smile, desire of lips long thwarted, such smile by a long, by such a lover kissed away. He that may never more from me departed, trembling all over, kissed her not. I say the book was Galia, Galia the Confide, of all who wrote, who read no more that day. While the one spirit thus spoke, the other's crying wailed on me with a sound so lamentable, I swooned for pity like I would, like as I were dying, and as a man falling. All right, so we have um, we have answered through twenty one. We'll do twenty two. We'll so page one hundred. Look on the left hand side of the well, page one hundred. Look at line one hundred, one hundred three, and one hundred six. Love, love, love. All right, that would be that would be what we call anaphora. It's exactly repetition, exact repetition of a single word at the beginning of phrase. You know, it's. That's not what it's asking. It's asking about parallelism. So if you start with the love, 
tell me tell me what's similar between these phrases um, love that so soon takes hold in the gentle breast took this lad with the lovely body and tore from me the way it leaves me still distressed and then love that to no loved heart remits love score oh, took me with place. such grace so it's written in the same way that's parallelism it's it's not just repetition of words that's that's a different word for that it's the fact that they're all written in the same grammatical form and you can hear it all right so what is the story that's 20 um, to analyzing francesca's speech does she seem sorry for her sin Okay, that was um, Dante. Don't get that. Yeah. Listen to this. She says in line one, 101, she says, took this lad with the lovely body they tore from me, the way of it leaves me in distress. And it says, took me with such great joy of him that see, it holds me yet and never shall leave me. So, so she's still... Still holding on to that. Yes. And earlier it said something... She's not sorry. She's still with him, and she's pretty happy, and they're in hell. So she's still holding she still on. She no, she and nobody does. Not in Dante, yeah. I believe. In reality, nobody in hell is. They sorry they got caught. They don't want to be hurting, but they're not bending the knee before Christ. And but it's too late anyway. Well, let's let me finish. Um, then it says, um, "That's really where are we?" Uh, does she seem to explain? All right, so we're not we're not in we're not at twenty four yet. Do you know her story? How did they fall in love? Um, they were young. They were young. Oh, by the way, uh, these are the two lovers, and this is the husband of Francesca. This is the brother of the husband. So, the brother, and then the husband. And she says they were reading one day. They were reading about Sir Lancelot and Guinevere, who were who also was an illicit relationship. Yeah. They were reading, and it's, it sounds corny the way I put it, but it's what it says. As we read on our eyes met, and then into our cheeks the changing, they blushed. Um, but just one moment overcame us when we read of the smile, the long the desire, the, the lips, and so forth. They, they kissed. And then it says, we read no more that day. So that was the beginning of relationships. Two together, alone, reading about a relationship. They look, their eyes lock, they, they blush, they kiss, and it's, it's over for them. So just that's, that's the, the bigger story. And then when, oh, this is important. He uses the word in line 117. He says, well... Let's start 115. Then I turn to them. Thy dreadful fate, Francesca, makes me weep. It so inspires pity, said I, and grief, compassion. Note it. Make, make a note of that. Circle it. Label it. He feels pity for her. What line? Line 117. He feels pity for her. Now, in this world, that would be probably a virtue, to feel pity for people who've done wrong. What is that? Grief, compassion. Yes, but it said the word pity is the word. Pity and grief's compassion. He feels pity for, for her. And in, he, in hell, that's not an appropriate response because uh, they've already been judged. They've been judged fairly, and they've been judged justly. And um, it, really, it really shows a weakness on Dante. Dante is actually going to change, but we, he's going to learn that you shouldn't pity people in hell because all those sins in hell actually represent your own sins. So when you look at your own sins, you shouldn't coddle them. You shouldn't pity them. You shouldn't feel sorry for them. You should, well, we'll find out later what you should do. And what did Jesus say you do with your own speck in your eye? What did he say you do? Or the log in there. What did he say if your right hand caused you to sin, what should you do? Cut it out. That's how Jesus said we should treat our sin. Not, ah, oh, so sorry for the sin. I feel, you know, I feel, you know, compassionate for the sin. No, you cut the sin off. So even though the sins are other people's sins, they all represent his own sins. And so you should look at your own sin. 
that's wrong. I need to stop doing it. And you, you know, it's how, how do you treat your own sin? Like you cut the hand off. You wouldn't really do it. We'd all be maimed. If we all cut our hand off and we sin, nobody would have hands because we're all sinners. If we all plucked our eyes out when we sin, we'd all be blind. In fact, it wouldn't change that you're a sinner either. You'd still sin with no arms and no eyes. You'd still sin. But so that what you're really cutting off is the sin. Um, all right, so let's skip the page. And were you asking to read? I wanted to read the text, not the story. Okay, well, I need somebody to read the story. Would you read the story? This is at the top of the page. This is circle three. The gluttonous meaning what? Eat too much. Now, we don't think sin, uh, eating is a sin. It's, it's, Wait, it's really not. What circle were we just in? We were in uh, two. Now we're in three. Canto four, circle three. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. That's what I was getting back to. Right. Okay. So we don't consider eat, overeating a sin, but what causes people to overeat is a sin. What the causes lack people? Of there you go. Lack of self control. Would that look poorly compared to lust? Because that's also like lack of Absolutely. So let's notice the geography of this section. What they're, what we know who the sinners are because we've already read that. Um, but how are they being punished? That's interesting. The punishment always fits the sin. I wonder if they're going to do this excess more than anywhere on earth. Well, we're about to see. So you're going, Neil, you're going to read the story. Dante now finds himself in the third circle, where the gluttonous lie wallowing in the mire. Mire. Meyer, drenched the perpetual rain and mauled by three-headed dog Cerberus. After Virgil has quit, quieted Cerberus by throwing earth into his jaws, Dante talks, take, yeah, talks to the shade of Chaco. Chaco, a Florentine who prophesies some of the disasters which are about to befall Florence, and tells him where he will find certain other of their fellow citizens. Virgil tells Dante what the condition of the spirits will be after the last judgment. Okay. When consciousness returned, which had shut close, the doors of sense leaving, leaving me stupefied, stupe, stupefied, stupefy, for pity and no sad kids both in their woes, new sufferings and new sufferers far and wide, where I move or turn myself or stray, my curious eyes are seen on every side. So who woke up? Dante's always the one speaking, unless their quotation marks and somebody else. Like like yeah, speaking. this is the second time he's passed he out and woke up. Okay. Um, I am now in the third circle, that of rain. One ceaseless pain, one Um, that's that's one of the two kinds of punishment. Cerberus is eating them, chew, not not eating them and eliminating them, but just chewing, on chewing them. them. So he's the three head dog. Yeah. That must be so mean. Okay. So what is the uh, what is the rationale behind that? Why does the punishment fit the sin? Yeah. Because when they were alive, the gluttonous were keep eating and eating and eating, and now it's like the opposite. They're being they're being they're 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 that's, that's right. Very good. And think of it this way. You might want to make a note. The surfers represents their appetite. So in a sense, if you overeat or overindulge in anything, the thing itself, the appetite, is eating you. 
it's eating you up. You become a slave. I'm hungry. I, I eat all the time. I'm just constantly eating. You're not in control of that. The appetite's in control of that. You should tell your appetite, no, you're not, not today. Uh, or the lust, no, you're not going to do that today. You let We let these things get to us and control us. Um, the, what is the other punishment? The rain. The rain and the cold and the hailstones and the sleet. And the snow, why is that symbol? How is that symbol? Because when they were able to overeat in the covenant, that they had good living conditions. If you're put in bad living yeah. conditions, it just amplifies the hunger. That's very good. And think about food. Food is always a company's celebration, parties. Every time that you have a party, people, somebody brings food. So on, in hell, it's just the opposite. It's not happy. It's not... It's uh, and you're even alone. You know, you're you're alone in your mud and muck and mire, and it's it's filthy and dirty. Eating too much is the same thing. At least that, that's the point they're trying to make. Uh, Lena, would you like to read? Okay, we'll get back to the. Okay, so top of uh, at once. Twenty-two. At once. Oh. Oh, you know, I'm not. Right, that's how he got around the dog. He threw dirt into its mouth. <laughs> and as a ravenous barking hound falls dumb the moment he gets his teeth on food and worries and bolts with never a thought beyond, so did those beastly muzzles of the rude fiend Sabras, who so yells on the souls they're all calf deafened, or they would be if they could. Then o'er the shades who the rain's heavy fall beats down. So, um, I don't know if it asks you this. We'll look and see. Uh, starting with 24, why is wasting and rotting an appropriate punishment for the gluttons in Circle 3 again? They've had good living conditions before, so they've had, it's like, they've had their fill and fill and food, and now it's almost like they're rotting just like food. Very good. I like that answer as well. Because they're rotting on food, basically. That's what I said, Oh. That's no, what, she, what he, what she just said. Yeah, it's like this is the the food eventually rots and it's not good for you. All right, so twenty five. Uh, what in, initial impressions do we have of Dante's home city of Florence based on the dialogue with Chaco? All right, so first of all, Chaco, he is a resident of Chaco, right there. He is he is a remember everywhere he goes or most of the places Dante goes in hell he he talks to people they talk back to him so he talks to this guy named Chaco Chaco actually means pig in Italian 
so they can see why that's appropriate. He was known for his gluttony. Remember in the Middle Ages, which we're out of at this point in, in history, Middle Ages being large was a sign of will. Um, but now we're, they're becoming to see that it's also kind of, it could be, it could be a bad Oh, like bad someone's thing. like, if they were large, wealthy, they're wealthy. The poor people were like, to because they don't have enough I food to eat. Uh, uh, yes, from, right. from the Canterbury Tales, which, uh, you know, kind of represents that. Yeah, and somehow he knows Dante is from Florence, so he's going to ask Dante, no, Dante asked him, can you tell me what's in store for the people of our distracted towns? Um, if, I need you to understand this. I think I mentioned before, people in hell, wherever they are, have the ability to see the future, but as the future becomes the present, they forget. So if like, they could have predicted that it's going to be, you know, whatever, that something's going to happen. And, but when that thing gets here, they have no idea. They don't know. Yeah. So, I thought about this last time before I went to bed. So, I know we talked about those who try to predict the future in hell because they're born to. So, do you, because they're what? Because, how do you explain to, like, those who try to predict the weather are always trying to. Not, not, not the weather. Not just, the weather. I mean, assume the future. So, do people who do weather. About sports analysts, I believe the oh, Redskins are going to win. Oh, there are no more Redskins. I believe the Commanders are going to win. It's like analyzing. Right. It's, it's a prediction. It's a prediction based on statistics, like the weather people. So it's not. You're not actually saying. It. I've seen seen the future, and this is what it is. Uh, it's just simply a prediction. Um, the fact is, hang on. The fact is, people. Even today, the people that, oh, you're going to meet a wealthy man next week, and you're going to go, you know, palm reading and that kind of thing, I'm gazing into my crystal ball, all that's sorcery, and it's prohibited, because the fact we don't know. Remember, Jesus even said, when are you coming back? It's not for me to know. Now, he said that out of his humanness, because he's fully human, but in his divineness, he does know. He's just, it was the role he was playing here. So what was the initial impression on the city? Well, we don't know yet. Oh, we hadn't read it yet. Um, well, any, who else was, wants to read here? Anybody else? If, otherwise, you can do it. So we, let me see if she can get this done. It'd be great if we finish this. He is now going to talk about Florence. And most of the details aren't important, but I want you to hear it anyway. Okay. And he, long time, their strife, he went into sports, income to bloodshed. The wood party dense will drive the other out with brutal force. But within three brief suns, their confidence will have a fall, and the other fraction rise by help of one who now sits on the fence. And these will lord and long with arrogant eyes, crushing their foes with heavy loads of weed, for all their bitter shame and outraged cries. Two righteous men there are whom none will heed, three sparks from hell. Avarice. Avarice and deep pride. Circle those. What do you call three things together? Triad. Oh, oh, triad. triad. This is a triad. I was Okay, 
Everybody get that? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, go ahead and do it. And Fiery. 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 I'm sorry. Fiery seed. His body's speechless and its soul of pride. Speak on. I bet more, much, much more revealed. I don't know how to say that. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Farinata. Underline circle. Farinata. Those worthy men and. Rest, rest Okay, let's answer these questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, big, big day. Second <laughs> round of the draft for the NFL, so be watching the Packers pick a wide receiver. But also, the Calvary game today at home is going to be camo night. So everybody come out to that. I see And soccer. <laughs> and soccer. All right, look at number 26. What predictions does Chaco have about Florence? How is he able to That's determine these? That was 27. Uh, 25. What initial impressions do we have of Dante's home city based on dialogue? 25, I'll give you the answer. It's corrupt and there's strife, like turmoil. Turmoil, political turmoil, moral corruption. Because you have avarice, envy, and pride involved. Okay, what initial impressions do you have that was it, 26, what, predictions about Florence? There's going to be political upheaval. And how does he know this? I just explained that, because in hell they have this ability to see the future, but they don't see the present. Uh, and number 27, the triad would be avarice, envy, and pride. And then uh, the last two, what is Chaco's last request? Tell them about me. Help them not to forget me. It's the only thing they have in hell is to be remembered. They have no hope of leaving hell ever, and they will be remembered. They want to be remembered. All right, number 29, to what spiritual event do you think Virgil refers to in line 40, 94? And that is the second coming of Christ. When, when Christ returns, everybody, including people in hell, will get a new body. So we will look at this again. Remember, your vocabulary is due Monday. What was number 29? Second the second of coming of Christ when people, all the dead people who've ever lived, will receive a new body. What, you, what about the bodies of people that lived 3,000 years ago? They even went too. You get a new body. What's the state of their bodies now? Well, 
floating. No, they're not floating.